So the probability of randomly guessing the given number of correct answers on a 30 question multiple choice exam has been found. Did you read did you watch the video? Whoever asked this one? Did you? You did, did you? Anyway. Um so we want to answer 15. Okay, well, if we want to Answer 15 correctly, that's what we would call K, because K is uh, the number of successes that we have. Uh, how many questions are we guessing at? 30. 30, what would that be? Mm -hmm. I don't have a notebook. It would be N. N is always like the, whenever we use the, the lowercase n, or almost always when we use lowercase n, it means all of the number of the whole thing, of all of, of everything that we're counting, okay? So n would be the total number of trials, the number of uh, trials of the experiment, the experiment being guessing at a single question. Um, what's the probability of, of a single success? I mean, and a, and a single success would be on a single question. So one fourth. One fourth is one out of the four question, or responses is correct. Okay. Q would be not getting it right. So three fourths, three fourths. Okay. And uh, since you asked, I'm going to make you pay attention to the whole explanation of this formula. So uh, we have 30 questions. <coughs> and uh, we'll put a little uh, dot, dot, dot there in between. We want to get 15 of those 30, 30 questions correct. What I'm working on here is explaining why this is the formula. Because uh, first, this part, you know, what, what sense does all that make? Well, we want to answer 15 correctly. What's the probability? To keep in mind, uh, one main idea that's really important is that when we want one thing to happen and another and another and a bunch of things to happen in sequence, we take the probabilities and multiply them all together, right? So the first thing we're going to do is answer the first question correctly, let's say. What's the probability that we answer that question correctly? One out. One. One four. Four. Yeah. Okay, what's the probability that we answer the next question correctly? One four. One four. So the, the probability that we answer two questions in a row is one sixth. One eighth. Or sorry, one uh, sixteenth. Yeah. I said six. But I just didn't put the teeth on the end. Yeah. Okay, how about the third one? Oh, one fourth. One fourth. And dot dot dot. All the way to one fourth, let's say that this would be the fifteen we get correct. Okay, so we stopped getting them correct at that point, right? Yeah. The rest we get wrong. Mm -hmm. The rest we get wrong. So that'd be three fourths. Three fourths. And we just keep going with these three fourths. All the way to the end. All the way to the 30th question is wrong. So the first 15 are correct. The last 15 <coughs> are incorrect. Um, so to get the probability that we'll get these 13 or these 15 correct, we just do one fourth times one fourth times one fourth. 15 times. Right? Or one fourth. Power. <coughs> and then we continue to multiply all the probabilities that we will get all these rest incorrect. That would be 3 fourths to the 15. Okay. So that's this part. We take the probability of success to the, to the, the power of the numbers of successes, because that's how many times that probability will appear. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then we'll multiply by 1 minus p. Well, whenever you take 1 minus the probability, you just get the rest. Well, those are called binomial uh, experiments. That means that you either succeed or you fail. So when we take 
one fourth away from one, we get three fourths. That's of course the probability that we'll get a question wrong. Okay, so that's our three fourths right there. And n minus k, that's just the rest of the time, which in this case happens to also be 15. So 30 minus 15 also gives us 15. Coincidence in this case. So why is this next part 30c15? Somebody explain that, why that's 30c15? So there's 30 questions and there's uh, a certain way you can get yeah, 15, right? How many ways yeah, how many ways can you, like, you don't have to get the first 15 right, you can get the last 15 right, the middle 15 right, the first one wrong, the next 15 correct, and the rest of them wrong. And, all, how many different ways can that happen? Yeah. How many different combinations of yeah. questions can we answer correctly? That's what that takes care of. Okay. And the reason we multiply is because, well, all we need to do, like any scenario, any specific yeah. scenario is going to have the same probability. 15 questions answered correctly, 15 answered incorrectly. We'd add up all those probabilities, but that would take a long time. We could just multiply by the number of ways that we can get 15 out of 30 questions correct, and that would be... 30C15. And that's all the pieces of that formula put together. So we grab the calculator, and yeah, you can, um, you should be able to go to the homework page, and somewhere in the past I've put a link oh, to okay. the file. Um, but also, like I have uh, an app, I think on here, I have it on the well, because I, 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 like, I downloaded the graphing calculator one time for Parsons, and like, it was kind of a crappy one. But yeah. Oh, can, there should be. Look at the stock uh, calculator on the, on, the, on the phone. The stock calculator one, but the, one, yeah, it, no. doesn't have, it doesn't have like math. And yeah, it doesn't have any of those. It doesn't go that far. Because no. I know it's supposed to be scientific. I know it's not like crazy. It's not that scientific. It has permutation. Um, uh, oh, there's factorial. That's why. That's why I was like, oh, wait, never mind. And then I thought it had like additional stuff to pick from. Maybe. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, just kind of hit the second method. Oh, second. Yeah. Nothing there. Watching one more time. What changes? Okay. Um, well, if you have a factorial, though, there is a formula for this. It would be 30 factorial over 15 factorial. Yeah. And, and the denominator would, would also be another 15 factorial. But um, it's just log 30 C 15 times 0.25 to the 15 times 0.75. Turn over. Probability that he will make exactly 10 of his next 15 free throw attempts. If he wants to make 10, that's K. Of the next 15, that's N. 
What's the probability, I mean, based on his, his record, what's the probability that he'll make a shot? If he's a shot? 0.927. What's the probability that he won't make that shot? 0.08. No, 0 0.073. 0 0.073. 0 0.073. Very small chance that he'll not make a particular shot. Now it's the same scenario as before. He might make the first one. It's probability he'll make that first one. Oh, 0 0.97. 0 0.927. 0 0.927. The next one, 0.927. Like the probability that he'll make two in a row is 0 0.927 times 0 0.927. Probability that he'll make three in a row is 0 0.927 to the third, and on and on and on. Say for ten shots. Then the next five. You don't make any of those. Point zero seven three. Point zero seven three. Three. Zero seven three. So he'll multiply. Well, the, the the rest of that probability would be point zero seven three times itself five times. Um, so that would be the this part of it. P to the k times one minus p to the n minus k. When I say Q, that is 1 minus P. P is 0.927 to the 10th, because we want to make 10 of them uh, somewhere in there. So definitely there's going to be 10 times that we multiply by 0.927 times 0 0.073 to the 5th, because however he makes them, the first 10, the last 10, uh, every other one, however it is, whatever combination of 10 shots that he makes out of 15, the other 5. So we'll have 5 times that we multiply by 0 0.073. And there are 15. See, 10 ways for him to make 10 out of 15. And that's counting all of the first 10, the last 10, the middle 10, the, every other shot uh, interspersed with missing in between, whatever. Uh, that counts all those ways, multiplies it by any, like any string of, of 10 and 5. 10 makes and 5 misses, and multiplies it by that many combinations. So, 15 actually is. There we go. Change this to 15. Is 10. He's pretty good at making free throws, though, right? Yeah. <coughs> so we're saying that it seems like there would be a pretty good chance of him making 10 shots, right? Yeah, but why does that seem so low? Because it's such a high percentage. Uh -huh. There's a higher percentage chance of him more than 10. Oh, maybe it's more likely that he'd make 11 or 12 or 13. Yeah. Oh. Right, because what we found is the probability that he'll make exactly 10, which means he doesn't make any more or any less than 10. Exactly yeah, 10. so he no. might make like 9, or he might make like yeah. 14. So when, that's why when we say that he'll make 10, our brains usually will make us think 10 or more. But it's not 10 or more, it's exactly 10. If we want to find 10 or more, we have to find the probability of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. That's six different probabilities that to happen together. Yeah. And if we did the, the math on this and we did the probability of him making 12 shots, that might be even more likely than him making 10, right? Maybe saying that he makes 10 out of 15 is like underestimating his abilities, right? So, and we can make a probability distribution. We could find out what is the most likely thing. We could just do this formula over and over and over, just changing the numbers out instead of 10, put in 11. So then this would change to 11, this would change to four, change to 12, 12, 12, and three, change it to 13, 13, 13, and two, and so on, just change all those five those different probabilities. 
make a probability distribution um, where you find probability of 0, 1, 2, all the way down to 13, 14, and 15. And you put little bars there representing how likely each of those outcomes is. Well, we don't know. Isn't that 10.5? Or Making the bar graph? Yeah. That was part of 10.6. We just went over a little briefly. Oh, okay. Because I remember that for some reason, I just don't remember yeah, what. We didn't have, well, we had one homework, two homework problems, where you read a probability distribution histogram, but we didn't make any. Oh, okay. The tricky thing here is when you have, say, a question like this on a test, recognizing that it's a question where you would use this binomial experiment formula. But as long as either you succeed or you fail, okay, if you can see that element in there, uh, if you can see that you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over, okay, that's another thing that's important. Uh, and as long as you know, the events are independent. If I, if I succeed here, it doesn't affect my probability of succeeding down the line. Right? Kind of like when you draw cards out of a deck and you don't put them back, it affects the probability of the next draw when you keep a card out of the deck. Okay? So that would be not independent. But this, let's see, do, are we doing the same thing over and over and over and over? Can you, could you describe this in a way that's the same experiment happening multiple times? How many times? No, 100 times. Yes, a total of 100 times. And how many, team, how many times do you want to succeed? 35. Okay, so what is the experiment? How would you describe the experiment? What are you doing? 100 times. Do you want to ask 100 people who are using the internet right now? If they're using, using Netflix. Netflix. If they're using Netflix for that internet, yeah. Okay. Or they're using the internet for the Netflix, okay. Um, good. Okay. Like that is leading us down the path to, I guess, I should be using this formula, right? So we've got uh, n, we just talked about n is how much? n is 100. 100, that's the total number of times we conduct the experiment. The experiment would be just asking a question. Uh, k would be? 35. I'm gonna succeed 35 times. Probability of k? 0.3. Isn't that amazing? Probably about the time that people get home, 30% of people in America, 30% of the true? internet usage. Huh? Is that true? I'm surprised it's According not true. According to uh, a Nielsen study, it is. Oh. Netflix is like people's lives. Yeah. I, it's my life. I don't have Netflix. Your I'm not alone. There's actually uh, the same study said that 58% of people do have Netflix. 58. You know how many people live like in America? In the, oh, okay. That's a lot of America. You know how many people live in America? Like three. Like a billion? A trillion? No. A trillion? Like there seven, are, I'm sorry, a billion is. is there's like, seven uh, billion people in the world, right? Right. A so billion of them in uh, like India and a yeah, billion in China. China. It's like 700 million or something like that. More well, like 300. Yeah, we're like a lot smaller as far as the numbers go. Yeah. Um, so 300 million, 58%. 300 million is small. That's like scary. That is pretty scary. Uh, I mean, 300 million people in America, 58% of them using Netflix, like a really rough estimate. That's 150 million plus, right? So that's half. Yeah. And 8% more. That's crazy. Netflix is making just pools of cash. Yeah. Whoever's starting Netflix is just swimming in money. Oh, yeah. So what's the probability of not Succeeding. Yes, I, I shouldn't put uh, probability of K, but probability of success on a single trial is 0.3. Okay, well, let's just use the if one. Right? We've got 100 questions, or 100 people we're going to ask the same question to. How many ways can we get 35 of them to respond 
However, it is we want them to respond. Okay, so in this case, yes, we do, or we are currently using the internet for Netflix. Um, what's the probability that they will answer yes? 0.3. 0 0.3. That's going to be there 35 times. It's going to be 35 factors of 0.3, and 0.7 will be there the rest of the time. So what? 65. 65. Figure out what that is. Done. One hundred. It took a little while for all like what number to put where. I don't even remember the formula, but like I understand it. So uh, well, you'll have it on the test, so. Well, that'll be nice anyway. So let's change everything around to the right numbers. One hundred. One thousand. To get anything of, of much interest, we want to definitely think about what's the probability that 35 or more of them are using it for Netflix. We really want to look at the probability distribution, but uh, for now, this is where we are. This is what we're doing. Okay. Any questions about that? No. Okay. What? <coughs> okay. So here's a. Kind of a more straightforward example. What's the probability of rolling a five exactly 12 out of 32 times? What are we doing over and over and over? Rolling, rolling a die. Rolling a die. That is the experience. That is what we're going to do over and over and over. 32 times. So, so what's that? 32. 32. We're doing this thing 32 times. What's K? 12. 12. We want to succeed 12 times. What's P? 1 one sixth the probability of getting a five is one sixth. What is the rest? Five, five sixths. Five sixths. That was a lot easier than the other one. Like I did number two in like thirty seconds, but it took me a while to figure out the one. Yeah. It's harder when there's more information you gotta figure out. When you have to start something like, oh thirty percent of people do something, that means that that's my probability. Yeah. That's the so the, the probability yeah. that if I ask a certain person When you try to conduct a binomial experiment based on some data that you collected, that's, that's a, a big gap to jump, but uh, you should get there. So 32C12, that's how many ways that we can get 12 out of 32 rolls. The first 12, the last 12, the middle 12, so on. That's probability, 1 sixth that will succeed. Well, that, we're going to succeed 12 times, so in any string of 32 rolls where there's 12 successes, and how many failures? 20. 20 failures. Yeah, 20 failures. Okay. So any string where we see anywhere, it doesn't matter where they are, 12 successes and 20 failures, we're going to see 1 6 multiplied by itself 12 times and 5 6 multiplied by itself 20 times. And we're going to see that probability right there this many times, and we would add up all of those probabilities or figure out what that number is and multiply. <laughs> wouldn't it be like, I was just sitting here thinking, like, wouldn't it be the same if we wanted to get anything but 5 20 times out of 32 rolls? Yeah, 
Change it from five to three to one to anything that has a probability of one sixth. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking like if we want to get if we like switch the two numbers like we um, want to get anything but five. Okay. So increase our probability of success because we've changed what success yeah. means. Right. Never mind. It does change it. Okay. Because it would change twelve. That's yeah. Thank <laughs> you.